Well, it's about one of the most ambitious development projects in the history of Indianapolis, the Bottle Works District near Mass Ave and the North Split. The former Coca-Cola plant is also the latest winner of a top restoration prize and the subject of a storytelling series all happening next month. WRTV's Nico Panisi is live this morning with the property's history and its significance to the Circle City. Good morning, Nico. Good morning, Lauren. Yeah, lots of history. Bottle Works is located on the northeast end of Mass Ave. And if you didn't know, it's a popular spot for dining, entertainment and arts, you name it. And actually, its name pays a nod to its history as a bottling plant. And at one point, it was not only one of the largest in Indiana, but one of the largest in the world. If you're visiting Indy, one of the hot places to stay is Bottle Works. The Art Deco style boutique hotel is the most recent winner of the Indiana Landmarks Cook Cup for Outstanding Restoration. Every year, Storytelling Arts of Indiana highlights the winning property as a part of the If These Walls Could Tell series. Storyteller Celestine Bloomfield says she'll never forget the moment she walked into the building in 1977. And I spun around and looked at all the colorful tiles, all the beautiful uh, woodwork, the majestic staircase that went up and I thought to myself, this is an awfully fancy building for the service center. And I didn't get a chance to explore that anymore until decades later in my retirement when I got to find out the history of the Bottle Works Hotel. What is that history? Well, Bloomfield says it all started with brothers James and Lee Yunker, who decided to start bottling Coca-Cola at the ginger ale plant in 1931. Together, they started what became the Coca-Cola plant and at one time was the largest plant in the country. In the 30s, 40s and 50s, the gleaming white terracotta facade, bronze storefronts, terrazzo flooring and boldly tiled walls became a showpiece for Indianapolis. I mean, it was built uh, right during the Great Depression and people wonder how he spent that much money. And part of the reason I've heard his, his family quoted was that he wanted his employees to know that it would be all right. The plant produced over 2 million bottles of soda per week and employed roughly 300. Longtime Indianapolis Motor Speedway owner Tony Holman purchased the franchise in 1964. Bloomfield says operations moved to Speedway and Holman wound up using the Mass Ave location as storage for his vintage cars. Bottles were passe and they invented cans. Indianapolis Public Schools then bought the property in the late 1960s, where it functioned as a service center, storage and bus depot for roughly 50 years. They also um, maintained it, kept it watertight, you know, um, actually covered up a lot of the original uh, details of the building. In 2016, Hendricks Commercial Properties began a $3 million redevelopment of the Bottle Works District. Doors opened late 2020. Vice President of Development Gavin Thomas says preserving historical buildings helps us understand who we are as a city. It informs you about the place that you live in, like what makes this place special? Why did people move here originally? And, you know, incrementally, each generation adds to that. If you'd like to hear a more in-depth version of the Bottle Works story, you can do so during a live performance of If These Walks Could Tell Bottle Works. That'll be happening on Sunday, March 3rd, and that'll be at Indiana Landmarks, Lauren. Nico, so cool, and I love how it kind of highlights the past, but it's, you know, this brand new, awesome place in our city, so very interesting. Thanks for highlighting that. Paying nod to the pre yeah, paying a nod to the present. You know, something they were telling me was that when they were building this space, People's, people would come up and say, you know, my dad worked there and my yeah. granddad worked there. And it's paying homage to the history of the city and what makes Indy so special. Love that. Lots of history there, Nico. Thanks for that. And we'll check back in with you a little bit later this morning.